Hey everybody, Angry Poncho here, and we are back playing Star Fox Adventures. In the last episode, we picked up the fourth and final spellstone, and now it is time for us to take it back to the Ocean Force Point Temple at Cape Claw. Now, uh, if you're interested in knowing, uh, we're actually we've actually reached, at least according to the title screen, 84% complete on the game, and my intent, as bold as it may be, is to finish the rest of the game in this recording session. Ooh, tricky. Huh, <laughs> get it? Tricky? No. But yeah, if you hit this tree, and then this tree, and then this tree, you can open up the gate and get into the Lightfoot Village. Which I don't think we actually need to go in there right now. So, let's ignore that and head on through to Cape Claw. Eh, you guys aren't important. Hey, 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 cut that crap out. Sixty scarabs to enter Cape Claw! Dude, that guy's awesome. I come to, I've uh, grown very fond of that little uh, turtle guy who eats your money. Not this way, where am I going? Map, map fail, or maze fail, I should say. This way? Nope. I think I would have memorized it by now. We've been through here a few times. But, no. Uh, the Ocean Force Point is actually one of the parts of the game that I don't remember as much about as other parts. Although I have to say, I had completely forgotten uh, how most of Dragon Rock went. But that went pretty smoothly anyway, except for the part with, with the stupid barrels. That took me forever to get that to work finally, because it's just so finicky. And Fox doesn't actually throw the barrel in the direction that you're running. He sort of like throws it diagonally to the right. So he throws it like 30 degrees to the to the right of wherever it is you're actually facing. And so when you wanted to, when you want him to toss it somewhere, you have to like run a little bit to the left of where you actually want the barrel to end up going. And that was what was throwing me off there. So made it a little bit more difficult for me. Anyway, looks like we've reached. Cape Claw. Are we gonna get any cutscenes now that we're here? No? Alright, well, I guess we'll just go over and head right into the temple. Actually, t I take that back. There's something else that we need to take care of here, which I... it occurred to me on the way... It may have been on the way to Dragon Rock, or it may have been like as soon as we arrived there, I can't remember. But I said it in the video, and I've forgotten that there was something we had to do out here, which we could have came here earlier. We could have come here earlier, excuse me. I've been trying to work on my uh, past perfect tense. Yeah, you can see this, the staff is glowing here. Dude, you, 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 get the freak out of here. Die! Alright, so I believe that our charged up earthquake is going to be enough to get us in here. Let's see. Oh, you're kidding me! Alright, well, how's he supposed to make it in there? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous! Oh, really, that's, that, that surprises me. I could have sworn that the earthquake was the way to get this to open. Hmm. That's strange. Maybe that cannon over there is the solution. Let's commandeer it. Or attempt to. This could be a total wild goose chase. But I'm going to go for it anyway. Oh, it's not going to be a goose chase. I just remember something. Last time we were here, we didn't have the portal device. And now we do. And I believe that there's a door back here somewhere that requires the portal device. So if we can find that, that's probably where we need to be headed. And I believe it's in here. Hey, look at that. Visual recognition for the win. Alright, so let's open it up. Seems like I have enough magic left. And they're gonna make it just a tiny bit harder for us by making us put out the fire first. Not that bad. Ah, now we have a cannon to use. Awesome. This should get us in there. See if I can line it up properly. Will that get it? Oh, a little short. Let's go a little longer than that. Three-fourths of the wave. Hey! Nice. I'm sorry, so we didn't get, like, a cutscene or a happy sound for that. Got any fuel cells nearby? I thought I heard that thing beeping, but I'm not sure exactly where they are. They're underneath here? Um, I can't really see. I can't look down far enough. That's strange. Not really sure how we would get to those. Hmm. Anyway, let's go over to that hole we just opened up. I'm a bit more interested in that than I am in fuel cells. And Tricky's swimming after us. Uh, is it just me, or did like making him change color make him bigger? I don't know why, it just seems like he's uh, a little bit larger now. I don't know, maybe it's just my imagination. 
but I, I kind of got that impression the first time I played through, and hey, buff from that, that's nice. We can't carry it. But, really, we're here for this hole, which, since we already have all the upgrades, we're, we're pretty well sure this is supposed to be an extension of the magic meter, which, hey, we'll take it. Why not? Hey, staff energy meter. Yes, it increases magicalness. Cool. Now, you may note that although we have um, all four spell stones, we're missing two Krizoa spirits. So, apparently after we return this, this, this last spellstone, the last thing we're going to need to do is go find those other two Krizoa spirits, and then we can get paid and get out of here, right? I mean, that's, that's the plan. Because, I mean, Fox is only here for the money. At least early on. His character, I think you're supposed to recognize change in his character, where he starts to care just a little bit more about the planet, instead of just about being paid. And I guess it's, you know, makes sense, but honestly, if he were a decent protagonist, he would have cared from the beginning. But they feel obligated to have character growth in the protagonist throughout throughout the game, which I don't feel is really necessary for a team like Star Fox. Are you serious? I have to use the cannon to open this. Is there no other way for me to get in there? You're you're freaking kidding me. Well, I wish I had known that in advance. I guess we'll just have to run back over. That was weird. Did you see how I landed in the water just then? Like he hit the water and didn't splash. He sort of just like hit it and like ran on it for a second and kept going. All right, well, let's open that up. That should do it. A little farther? A little more. There we go. A little bit more. Perfect. All right. We should be able to just swim right back over there. Thankfully, Cape Claw is a relatively open area, and we can sort of just go from one place to another without too much difficulty. We run over here, go up the hill. And I sort of expect the puzzles in the Ocean Force Point to be very similar to the first time through, maybe just a little bit more difficult. Probably only slightly more difficult. Because honestly, the ones that we had before were about on par for this game. I wouldn't expect them to become much harder than that. So we just solve this puzzle again? No, oh, it looks like the door's already open in the on the other side. So that one remains solved for us, that's nice. We only have to do that one one time. We just hop right ov over here and continue on. Go into like what looks like a loading area almost when you go through that long hallway like that. Whoop! And here we are outside. This is kind of cool. I like this area. It's sort of like an oasis almost. Is there another Boffin Dad down there? Yeah, there's a Boffin Dad in the water over there. But I can't carry it since I haven't died since like the very beginning of this LP, or since I ran into that hole. Oh my god. I feel like that's, this, this should be an openable door, but it's not, sadly. Get out of here. I'm entirely under uninterested in fighting you. Anyway. Yeah, it's kind of weird, like, died twice at the beginning of the LP, but like, or early on in the LP, and now I have too many Boffin Dads, I don't even know what to do with them, you know? It's kind of funny. It's not, and it's not like my gaming technique has improved at all, I've been, I'm just as reckless now as I ever was. I think the only difference is that now I have seven foxes instead of three or four. Because if you recall, the first time I died, I only had three foxes, which, I mean, is acceptable. I'm watching, uh, Nintendo Capri Sun's LP, where is the spellstone? Oh, I can never find the things in this inventory. Watching NCS's LP of uh, Twilight Princess right now, and he's already died twice, I think. And he's maybe two thirds of the way through the game, so he's a, I'm about on par with that, I guess. I don't really like to compare myself to LP other LPers that much, though, just because my style is is different fr from theirs in a lot of ways. And I sort of, uh, you know, I guess that we don't have to. Uh, memorize this pattern. I think what they want you to do is become a sharp claw and pick up one of these boxes and then put it on the switch so that it just holds the button down for you. Can I drop this? No? Okay, apparently I have to throw it. It's, oh, maybe I can make Tricky stand on it. That would do it, wouldn't it? As Phoenix once said, uh, all Tricky is is a pot from one of the Zelda games. Alright, so we got Let's memorize it as numbers again. 1 through 4 from left to right. 1, 4, 2, 1. 4, 4, 3, 3, 3. 1, 4, 2, 1. 4, 4, 3, 3, 3. 1, 4, 2, 1. 4, 4, 3, 3, 3. Awesome. And you should be able to hopefully get that memorized in that way. I like to do it with numbers, because it makes it... God damn it! There. 
dude, just take some hits already. I like to do it with numbers because I find it easier than like middle right all the way to the right, middle left. You know, it's just easier for me to memorize a sequence of numbers and a sequence of locations. So, yeah. Anyway, but the average uh, person can memorize seven digits, which is why f which is why phone numbers are so easy to remember. It's because anybody can do that, really. But uh, if you're able to memorize more than uh, seven digits at a time, you're of above average intelligence. And if you're able to memorize more than 10, you're considered to have, like, a gifted amount. Like, you're considered gifted as far as your memory retention is concerned. It's because it's rare that, that you find someone who can easily memorize things that are more than 10 digits long. Or 10 or more. Which I believe I just did was, like, 7 or 8. I think it might have been... Well, when you remember, it was 1, 4, 2, 1. So it was 9 digits long, so that's not bad. Alright, well, I gotta go.